as we move on into the next point, we're looking at um, point number five, which is the letter O. We're talking about opening students' eyes. This is probably my favorite part of, of teaching the lesson um, because this is where we take the text and we're, we're literally trying to bring it to life before the students. Um, uh, it's always fun and creative uh, to, to have illustrations, object lessons, maybe a, a video illustration, a personal example, um, something to get their attention. Um, and to drive home the point that you're trying to make. So in my uh, in my study, talking about um, talking about uh, uh, the calling to to love one another, um, to to love others, uh, I, I want to open their eyes by talking. Like the first point, our love for others is evidence that we love that we that we belong to God or we love God. Um, I, I'm going to do like a for for this point. What I've done in the past is I do um, the evidence solves the case. So. You could set up a mystery, or you could set up a, a crime scene, and and you could say you could remind them that um, to solve to solve a case in a crime scene, you've got to have substantial evidence, and, and talk about how that evidence gives support um, to the reality of the crime or uh, to the mystery being solved. It's the same way in our walk with Christ. The evidence lies in whether or not we have a relationship with Jesus, and if we have a relationship with Jesus, we're going to love others. All right, I hope that. Hope that makes uh, sense. Some more things um, uh, uh, we uh, we could talk about. Um, some questions that can bring the point to life. Um, how did Jesus love? Uh, how do we express our love? Maybe get the students to open up. That, that that's actually one of the, my favorite ways to open their eyes is uh, talking to them um, about uh, uh, about you know, talking talk to them about the text and asking them questions and getting them to respond. Um, but there's lots of ways that you can you can open their eyes. Just experiment, okay? The letter O is all about finding ways to communicate that truth. For every point, you should have some type of illustration of, of some sort. All right, moving on to, to the letter S. Seek other resources. This is the question that needs to be asked. How will you study? Um, now, when I'm, when I'm in a text... Uh, I like to I like to study the text for myself first. So I use the sword method. I ask the questions: What does it say about God? What does it say about man? Is there an example to follow? Um, is there an obey to command uh, or a command to obey? Um, but but then I go further after I've studied the text for myself and I've gotten what I think that um, God would have me to learn. I, I move on to other resources. So this is when you would pull out commentaries. You may watch other sermons. Um, you may, you may use some illustrations that you've seen in other sermons, but the goal is for you to do your own study first and then seek out the other resources. And then the last one, letter E, is evaluate the message. Evaluate the message. You should evaluate the message before you preach it. You should evaluate the message after you preach it. So there's some questions to ask when you're evaluating the message. Um, one question is, have I, have I written my objective clearly? Do I have a targeted point? Another question is, are my points tied directly to the keyword in the objective? Am I, am, am I parallel with the text? Asking the question about covering too much material. Am I, am I trying to cover too much ground in this sermon? Remember, a student can only sit for so long. They can only listen for so long. You've got to be very careful and sensitive to the time. Um, my wife works with, uh, she works with, young, with little ones, so kindergartners, and she knows that you can't sit them down for... 30 minutes and, and try to teach them for 30 minutes with them just sitting there listening to you. You have to do things to get them moving and alert. So five to 10 minutes is all you've got with a little one before you have to move on to the next thing. It's the same thing with youth. You've got 18, 20 minutes, 25 minutes to speak to them. Don't drag it out. Don't drag it out. Ask the question, am I covering too much material? Am I consistent with scripture? That's, that's a big one. And then the last one is, am I passionate? Am I passionate about what I'm going to communicate? Um, do I do I love this word? Uh, do I do I have a heart to to teach this message? Um, do I want them to understand? Do I want them to be saved? Do I want them to be closer to Christ? Um, am I passionate? Am I excited about this message? All right. So um, those are some mechanics for communicating truth uh, that you can use in your preparation. I hope that you will. I know that you have your own methods. Um, these are just some things that will help you out. All right. So you're going to be taking your midterm this week. Um, midterms are going to be taken just like all other quizzes. Uh, I've uploaded them. All you have to do is download, and then you need to fill out the you need to fill out the test, and then post it in the assignment bank. Um, I haven't gotten all the grading done, as you can tell, and I'm working on it. 
Um, I should be caught up with grades by the beginning of week six. I'm going to take a big chunk of my day out on Friday and uh, try to try to get caught up with these grades. Okay, so um, God bless you all. I hope that you're all doing well. I pray for you, and uh, I'll see you next week. God bless you.